Okay, hi, I'm Jeff Morris. I'm uh, going to do a, a deeper dive into Couchbase right now, uh, give you a closer look at what makes it really special and differentiate it from a bunch of our competitors. So as I mentioned, uh, um, in, in I always mention uh, that the reason why customers are, are buying us is number one for performance. They tell us that because, you know, after I ask them, what was the number one reason why you bought us? And uh, it's performance. But they also need the flexibility of a multi-model data store. They want to break out of the rigidity of a uh, uh, a, a relational schema uh, primarily, and then, but yet not give up any of the core capabilities that they depend on from relational technologies. In many cases, they're building mobile applications and we have a great solution there. And uh, in, in this economic condition, they're trying to drive down their cost of operations and the cost of their cloud operations is uh, uh, really you know, shocking in, in, in many situations. So like I said, the number one reason when I asked customers a couple of years ago, why did you buy us? Performance was the number one reason. The second reason was replication. The third reason was we scale really well. And I'll keep talking about that uh, uh, as we move on. But the other interesting aspect was the reason why they kept us was not those reasons. It's SQL++ or what we have formerly called Nickel is, as our query language. With a reference implementation of SQL++, it's a language that's also used uh, in asterisk DB. Um, but uh, it was the, the ease of use or ease of access of, um, of the query language. Everybody knew it even before they even looked at Couchbase. Uh, and that was a big deal. And then replication and then the, the JSON flexibility and then the performance and memory first architecture were uh, quickly followed behind those. So let's talk about where Couchbase gets its speed. It's that memory first design. And there's two things I wanna highlight on this particular slide is one, all of this you know, data control uh, uh, processing, DCP streaming, is that's the in-memory activities that we're doing. Whenever we're taking a, 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 taking a, a, a write or giving a read, um, all of those activities are happening in memory first. But we can take each one of these services that we offer and deploy them on, you know, as uh, each, each of these are independently scalable services themselves. That data service is the main one. That's, that's the one that does reading and writing and, and accessing the... Uh, uh, the data from disk, but the index service operates scales independently. Uh, the query service, the SQL++ query service operates independently as does search and some of these other services. So this asynchronous architecture is always processing data all over the place and able to support this thing we call multidimensional scaling, right? which is this scale these services independently so you can uh, uh, you know, performance match the database to the environment as well as to the needs of the application. Um, it's a really, really clever kind of capability that uh, I, I've never seen anybody else offer this. But let's talk about, all right, the really cool thing that you were just asking me about a minute ago was, you know, how do you do active-active clustering and, you know, how can I be a distributed system? Well, the way Couchbase does it is when you define the initial install, the initial bucket of Couchbase, you do two things. You pick, you know, which data store you're going to use, the high-density one that we just released or the, the old one that we've had for years. Um, and then you just, you know, what, what the database does is it uh, creates what we call virtual buckets, a thousand virtual buckets as your shard map, basically. When you, do, when you break the database apart, we've already determined what that, that sharding design is gonna end up looking like. And so we build a cluster map. And then instead of having a config server like Mongo does, or pushing it into every node on the database like uh, uh, CockroachDB does, what we do is we feed it to the application, right? And so anytime the, the partition map changes or the cluster map changes, we update the application and tell it your map is different. Here's, you know, here's where your new location is. Uh, but the, so the advantage here is the application can you know, address or talk to any, you know, any cache-based cluster and know where its data is and get to its data at in-memory speeds. So uh, you know, it, 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 it's a really, really clever design. There's only one other vendor I know who does anything near this, uh, which is uh, Aerospike, um, which looks like a Couchbase, you know, a young Couchbase clone kind of thing. Um, but uh, you know, like I said, really, really clever kind of uh, capability here. Yeah, and it supports. I, I, I have a question regarding yeah. that integration and awareness of the application. Does that mean that the application has to be developed specifically to work with Couchbase to understand where the sharding is happening? Yeah. Okay, so if I have I mean, an this existing, is not like a post, it's not like a Postgres portable kind of thing that um, uh, that you see with a bunch of the other. Uh, uh, you know, gotcha. The... So if I have an existing application that used Postgres, and now I want to move over to Couchbase, 
there's some work I'm going to have to do as the developer. There's a little bit of work you got to do there. Yeah. Okay. Got we, you. Yeah, but, but we find that that happens when the customer's migrating to the cloud too. So, you know, the, a, a lot of their decisions is they might use that existing application as their requirements and then start start again because they might change their development practices. They might do microservices. You know, I think there's there's oftentimes a lot of other drivers to that. Sure. And the conversion from a different database backend to Couchbase, is that relatively straightforward or is there is it a fairly heavy lift? Am I using different libraries, different modules? You're using so every you're, you're using Couchbase specific libraries and, and modules, yes, but the exercise is not overwhelming. Um, you know, and especially because the um, the query languages that you're using are very very portable, right? Our you know, your SQL ninety two and SQL plus plus are really portable. You know, uh, uh, between each other. I'll show you that in a sec. Um, but the uh, uh, so it's more the you know the the data structure design of how you move model JSON rather than in a schema. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Do you yep. have specific tuning in in the Couchbase configuration, especially when we get to replication? Because uh, because it's B tree based, it's generally really tuned for read, and at extremely high. There, there's there's often questions of like, extremely high writes that you're going to face some kind of write penalty, and then you've got write penalties, you've got compaction, and then now you have replication to a secondary site. And just curious, what your what tuning options do you have on customer side, or do you just you're already ready to go. Oh no! Well, no. There's a lot of tuning options that you can do on you know on on your side. One, you know, one is that you know apply the right resources so it, it, it's inherently fast when you lay it down on your infrastructure. But the second one is related to replication. There's uh, uh, filtering inside our our uh, uh, replication capability, so uh, you can you know, determine how much or how little you get replicated at, at any given time to make sure everything's fast. And then when you're doing the synchronization exercise to the smaller devices. There's delta sync in you know in that as well. So we're trying to always reduce the amount of uh, you know packets that we're shipping across the network. So let's look. So um, I just published this uh, uh, yesterday. Um, this uh, uh, is a you know, we we've been doing uh, partnering with a company called El Toros to run in, independent benchmarks and and you know you can uh, uh, I ask them to run it. I ask them to run this test. They configure it and they run it and then they tell me the results. Um, so this is Couchbase Capella in the YCSB uh, workload A, which is a half and half test, right? It's half uh, half reads and half uh, updates to the data, so half writes. Um, so this is a pretty write intensive um, uh, activity. And as we scale the cluster sizes of ourselves against all of these other products, um, you can see Couchbase performs really, really well in this particular activity. And this is mostly a function of its in-memory uh, capabilities here. Uh, the way I end up presenting this back to my customers is not, hey, look, I'm faster. It's actually how much work can you do uh, for you know um, uh, for your dollar? Or you know, in, in the, the the model I've built here is um, if I do a billion operations, how much does that cost me? Uh, so I'm taking the cost of the infrastructure to run those tests, and then figuring out how much you know both the work I could do in a month, and then Figuring out what you know per billion, how much that happens to be. Uh, so Couchbase on, on the right hand side, lower is better, and we're nice and low and nice and consistent. Whereas you can see the uh, my my competitors get more and more expensive as uh, um, uh, as the cluster size grows. So, um, so in order to compare between those, I, I'm guessing you just did, it was a key value uh, operation, given the databases you're comparing it to. Um, in many cases, yeah. Well, in, in, in some of the, you know, in, in this test, I think we're, because we're reading and writing the data through, uh, through JSON, we're doing, you know, uh, uh, this, this one is, is, uh, is talking to our query engine, et cetera. There's other tests that we've run that are just very strict key value access things where me and Redis are like this, right? Depending on the size of the cluster. Um, so we let you. Know, I've I've kind of pitched this uh, notion of JSON being the uh, you know one of those core drivers as to why a customer moves from a relational system to uh, uh, to a document store, uh, and it's ultimately I'm also trying to just demonstrate that it's not that scary to do. Uh, so um, the pitch goes, you know, uh, the you know unlike relational systems, the developer themselves can control 
the, the structure of the data. And this is really appropriate for things like um, user profiles or product catalogs that need dynamic pricing associated with them, like airline tickets, is you're constantly changing the values of the uh, uh, um, in the documents themselves, or perhaps adding new attributes to a document that you never thought of before in this iteration of the application, like, you know, Jeff likes blue, so give him a color preference of blue uh, next time I update the application. Those kind of things are, are, are great drivers for why uh, NoSQL is uh, appropriate um, in, in these kind of applications. So as I mentioned, you know, single database, lots of different uh, you know, usage functionality, whether it's as a cache, uh, the document store, comparable structures uh, you know, for, for relational, um, uh, very, very familiar query language, search, eventing, et cetera, all, all baked into the same system. So I've uh, uh, talked about this, Couchbase being really fast, being uh, uh, very uh, uh, wallet friendly, uh, being really versatile in terms of uh, what we do, and as I mentioned, really, really easy. So let's compare that to what Mongo does. Um, so when, when I look at Mongo, right, they, they don't have the memory first design, they don't have that resource scaling that I, uh, um, uh, that I talked about, nor do they have the ultra low latency kind of capabilities that, uh, that we can offer because we're an in memory store. Um, they tend to be more expensive than we do, right? But the differences really start to show as we scale the environment. We're, we're competitive with Mongo in, in, in small case, you know, in you know, three node cluster kinds of things, but we get better and better as the cluster size grows. Um, they don't, in, in uh, Realm, they don't have that peer-to-peer -peer sync kind of capability, and they're, all, they're, they're coming up with ways to do SQL, but they don't really have uh, core SQL support in their, uh, uh, in their environment. But when I look at the whole market, right, and kind of break out where does everybody fit in this kind of space, you get some vendors have that caching capability. Uh, pretty much everyone's got in some form key value access. Almost everyone's got the JSONs the, the capabilities. Uh, there's some that you know do transactions really well, and some have uh, you know goofy goofiness with their transactionality. Not you know only the SQL uh, uh, vendors have a SQL query language, uh, unlike Couchbase uh, or like Couchbase. But search, we we see combinations of Redis as the cache for Mongo alongside Elasticsearch at the same time. I love that kind of design. And that, like I said, that's the kind of thing that we go, we tend to go after. Um, but having active, active clustering uh, kinds of capability, that's not something you see very regularly. And the geo replication or synchronization out to, uh, uh, out to mobile are all things that make, continue to make Couchbase really special here. So when I said our SQL plus plus query language, is SQL, it's SQL, all right? It's, you know, and, and it supports things that, you know, you don't see document stores do like joins or like nesting queries or support for, you know, arrays in, you know, uh, uh, in the query. So, but you, you look at SQL 92 on the left, Couchbase is SQL++ in the middle, it's the same statement, right? So that portability eases that transition as we were talking about earlier uh, into, uh, uh, into Couchbase. And then you compare that to, to Mongo's query language, and it's much more uh, imperative uh, than, than being a declarative language. So Couchbase, are, when I surveyed my customers, right, more than half of the, of the survey respondents said, yes, I've saved you know, about 50% in, in my overall TCO when I switched to Couchbase. So then when you carry that over to Couchbase Capella, our database as a service, it also affects, you know, who's managing the system and the, the uh, intensity of, you know, doing uh, upgrades and things like that. We take care of all that for you now. So uh, you're, you're able to reduce hardware operating costs, your know, infrastructure costs, operational costs, and team costs all at the same time. Hey, Jeff. Yes. Yeah. Just a real quick question, and you may have hit on this, and I may have missed it. A few slides back, you were showing the, the difference between uh, Couchbase and MongoDB. As part of your onboarding into your solution, do you also provide the, the ability to translate MongoDB queries and, and statements and things like that into Couchbase? Yes, I've got utilities to, uh, to, to do that. And uh, uh, the generative AI technologies are getting pretty good at doing that too. Sure, okay, thank you. Okay, so you know, a, a master picture of what Couchbase looks like in a different form, deploy to any cloud, 
uh, you know, all of our distributed database capabilities here, and then the in-memory data services uh, that are the primary, you know, things that a, a developer sees when they're building uh, uh, applications with Couchbase. Uh, just one curious uh, thing about autonomous operator. Is that mm -hmm. over and above? Is there internals that make it autonomous or is it like, cause operator itself is relatively self-healing for I'm just curious what makes it autonomous? Uh, you have the ability to, it does have auto scaling capabilities built into it, right? You can set thresholds for, you know, when a machine's getting too, too hot, right? Then, you know, repartition the data and, and add, a, add a node or <laughs> draw back a node when it's getting, uh, you know, when it's not being used kind of thing. So, you know, there is real autonomy kind of built into it. And that'll actually uh, go all the way down to the point of like where it's doing sharding and such, or yeah. is this, okay. 